Third generation kefalosporins are the must prescribed kefalosporins and are the first generation to be considered as extended spectrum kefalosporins or broad spectrum kefalosporins. Drugs with IME or TEN or ONE at the end are third generations with the exceptions of cefuroxine which belongs to the second generation. The drugs in third generation are cefixim, ceftazidim, cef Odoxine, Cefotaxim, Ceftijoxine, Ceftriaxone, Cefoperazone, and Ceftibutin. Moxalactam and Ceftinib do not follow the rule but belong to the third generation. Moxalactam is no longer used because of its bleeding side effects. This group of bacteria are effective against both gram positive and gram negative organisms, but their optimum activity is mostly against the gram negative organisms. Now let's talk about the spectrum of activity of the third generation. Kephalosporins. The third generation kephalosporins are more stable against the common beta lactamases of gram negative bacilli, and these compounds are highly active against E. coli, Proteus mirabilis, Indole positive Proteus, Klebsiella, Enterobacter, Cerasia, Citrobacter, and Neisseria. They are also active against Haemophilus influenza. They are the therapy of choice for gram negative meningitis due to susceptible Enterobacteriaceae. The third generation kephalosporins are less active against the most gram positive organisms than the first generation and second generation. They are inactive against Enterococcus, Listeria, Methicillin resistant Staphylococcus, and Acinetobacter. Both Cefotaxim and Ceftriaxone belong to the third generation of cephalosporins and they are usually active against pneumococci with intermediate susceptibility to penicillin. But strains which are fully resistant to penicillin are res resistant to the third generation kephalosporins as well. Based on the activity against the Pseudomonas, third generation are roughly grouped into two groups. One that is active against Pseudomonas and the other one which is poorly active against Pseudomonas. The drugs which are poorly active against Pseudomonas are Ceftriaxone and Cefotaxim. Ceftriaxone is a bactericidal agent for gram-negative pathogens. They are also active against Haemophilus influenzae including the beta lactamase producing strains. They are active against Moraxella cataralis, most of the E. coli, Klebsiella pneumoniae, Morganella, Neisseria, Proteus and Enterobacter species. They are also active against Cerasia and most of the Acinetobacter species. Some Acinetobacter species which are multi-drug resistant are also resistant to Ceftriaxone and Cefotaxim. Ceftriaxone is active against all group A and group B Streptococcus and nearly all Streptococcus pneumonia including the penicillin sensitive pneumococcus but outside the CNS. Methicillin sensitive Staphylococcus aureus, Staphylococcus epidermidis and other Cons, MRSA, and all intercocus are considered ceftriaxone resistant. Ceftriaxone has minimal anaerobic activity. Now let's talk about the pharmacokinetics of ceftriaxone. Unlike other kephalosporins, ceftriaxone is highly protein bound. This effect prolongs its half life, allowing once or twice daily dosing. It can penetrate bone, joint, muscle, skin, and middle ear with approximately 10% reaching the CSF through the inflamed men meninges. To 70% of ceftriaxone is excreted unchanged in urine, with the rest excreted unchanged into the bile. Let's talk about the side effects of ceftriaxone. Ceftriaxone is usually well tolerated in most of the cases. Less than 5% of cases can develop some kind of side effects. Thrombocytosis, leukopenia can occur. Some patients may have allergic reactions secondary to ceftriaxone. Candida super infection like di diaper dermatitis is also encountered. Diarrhea with snowphilia. Pseudomembranous colitis can also occur but are rare because of biliary sludging as well as pseudolithiasis formation and the ability of ceftriaxone to displace bilirubin bound to albumin can result in jaundice in infants. Rare but serious side effects like hemolysis often cause life-threatening conditions. A particular fatal reaction due to the calcium ceftriaxone precipitates in the lungs and kidneys of neonates have been reported although it's very rare. Thus, ceftriaxone should not be reconstituted or mixed with calcium containing product like Ringer's lactate solution, Hartman solution, or parenteral nutrition containing calcium. In addition to that, ceftriaxone should be avoided in infants less than 28 days of life if they are receiving or expected to re receive intravenous calcium containing products. However, ceftriaxone and calcium products may be used concomitantly in patients aged more than 28 days, provided that the infusion lines are thoroughly flossed between the infusions. So, let's talk about the clinical use of ceftriaxone. Ceftriaxone is one of the most commonly used drug in our clinical practice. They have been used in cases of 
meningitis, community acquired pneumonia, gonorrhea, pelvic inflammatory diseases, intra-abdominal infections. Now let's talk about the cefotaxim. Cefotaxim and ceftriaxin are used in similar clinical scenarios because of the similar spectrum of activity. Advantages of cefotaxim over ceftriaxin include no bilirubin displacement from albumin. Thus, it is preferred in neonate. It also has better in vivo activity against the methicillin sensitive Staphylococcus aureus. Also, it doesn't cause biliary surging and doesn't form pseudolithiasis of gallbladder. However, one disadvantage of cefotaxim is it has to be frequently given to the patients. It has to be administered 6 to 8 hourly in comparison to the ceftriaxone, which can be given 12 to 24 hourly. Now, what are the side effects of cefotaxim? Cefotaxim can cause allergy. Diarrhea, Canada superinfection can occur as side effects of ceftazidime. Now let's talk about the third generation cephalosporin that is active against pseudomonas. Ceftazidime is the third generation cephalosporin which has activity against pseudomonas. Ceftazidime has activity against most community acquired gram negative pathogens in addition to pseudomonas aeruginosa. It has been effective in treating pseudomonas aeruginosa meningitis. Ceftazidime is a FDA approved drug for inpatient treatment of febrile neutropenia. However, its use is not recommended as a monotherapy because of poor activity against pneumococcal infections, MSSA and it has no activity against MRSA and Staphylococcus epidermidis and Enterococcus as well. Further, cefazidim can induce the production of high levels of cephalosporinases among mostly nosocomial gram-negative pathogens including Cirrhacia, Pseudomonas, Acinetobacter, Citrobacter and Enterobacter species. Thus, cephalosporin should be reserved for use in infection proven or highly sus suspected to be due to Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Now let's talk in short about oral third generation cephalosporins. Ceftinil, Cepodoxine, Cefixin and Ceftibutin are some of the commonly used oral third generation cephalosporins. Ceftinil and Cepodoxine have balanced gram positive and gram negative activity. Ceftinil is very palatable whereas Cepodoxine is bitter. Both are active against MSSA and some penicillin sensitive pneumococcus. Cepodoxine and Ceftinil are used primarily for treating acute otitis, otitis media, acute bacterial sinusitis, and streptococcal pharyngitis. Cefixim and ceftibutin are similar in spectrum, but cefixim has slightly more gram-positive activity. Ceftibutin is less active against Moraxella cateralis. Both have excellent activity against coliform bacteria and are more stable to beta lactamases than other oral cephalosporins. Ceftibutin and ceftibutin are excellent for treating UTI, or respiratory infection due to bitter lactamase producing non typeable hemophilus influenza. Now let's talk about the fourth generation cephalosporins. Drugs with PI in the name like cefepine and cefpirome are considered to be the fourth generation cephalosporins. These drugs have the in vitro activity of fourth generation cephalosporin resembles that of cefazolin of first generation and ceftazidim of third generation with effectiveness against MSSA streptococcus pyogenes, streptococcus pneumoniae that is penicillin sensitive streptococcus pneumoniae outside CSF, E. coli, H. influenzae, Moraxella cateralis, Nizeria gonerae, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, Morganella, Proteus mirabilis, Citrobacter, Enterobacter, Klebsiella, Providencia and Cerasia species. This fourth generation cephalosporins have no activity against MRSA, Enterococcus, extended spectrum beta lactamases or AMPC beta lactamases producing gram, gram negative organisms, as well as they are inactive against multi drug resistant Acinetobacter species. The fourth generation cephalosporins have a positively charged quaternary ammonium attached to the dihydrothiazine ring. This results in better penetration through the outer membrane of the gram negative bacteria. Cefepine, a fourth generation cephalosporin, is as active as septazidine for Pseudomonas aeruginosa and is active against some ceftazidine resistant isolates of Pseudomonas aeruginosa. As with this anti pseudomonal penicillins, cefepime should generally be given in combination with an aminoglycoside for treatment of serious Pseudomonas aeruginosa infection when the susceptibilities are unknown. What are the side effects of 4th generation cephalosporins? At higher doses, in case of renal insufficiency, these drugs can cause seizures, particularly non-convulsive status epilepticus. They can also cause candida superinfections. Now let's talk about the 5th generation cephalosporins. The 5th generation cephalosporins are also known as anti methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus cephalosporins. This group of antibiotics include ceftarolin and 
Safety Bitrol Ceftaroline is a fifth generation cephalosporin whose active metabolite has a spectrum of in vitro activity similar to the ceftriaxone but with improved gram positive activity. In particular, ceftaroline has higher affinity for PBP2A, that is, penicillin binding protein 2A, that is present in medicine resistant Staphylococcus and thus have an activity against MRSA group of Staphylococcus aureus. They are also active against vancomycin intermediate Staphylococcus aureus. In addition to that, ceftaroline has activity against Streptococcus pneumoniae that is intermediate or resistant to penicillin or ceftriaxone. Ceftaloline, however, is not active against Enterococcus nor are they active against AMPC overproducing or ESBL producing Enterobacteriaceae, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, Acinetobacter baumeni, or Bacteroides fragilis. Ceftobiprol is another fifth generation cephalosporin and it is available in Canada and some European countries. However, it is not available in United States of America. This cephalosporin is capable of binding to penicillin binding protein 2A, thus active against MRSA. It can also bind penicillin binding protein 2X, that is present in penicillin resistant streptococcus pneumoniae. Thus, they can act against penicillin resistant group of streptococcus pneumoniae as well. Ceftobiprol has in vitro activity similar to that of ceftazidim or cefepime against Enterobacteriaceae. It also has activity against Enterococcus. In addition to that, ceftobiprol appears to have a low potential for selection of resistance. Thus, the advantage of ceftobiprol over ceftaroline is that they are active against Enterococcus as well and they have less chance of resistance. Now, let's talk about advanced cephalosporins. Ceftobiprol is an advanced cephalosporin. It is a suitor for cephalosporin that has activity against multi drug resistant gram negative bacteria bacteria including extended spectrum beta lactamase or carbapenamases producing organisms. They are also active against multi-drug resistant Pseudomonas aeruginosa, Acinobacter baumeni, Stenotrophomonas maltophilia and Burgholderia cypacea. In addition to enhanced stability against beta lactamases, it has a novel mechanism for transport across the outer membrane that can overcome the effect of membrane permeability mutations as seen in Pseudomonas aeruginosa. However, Cephidurocol is thought to have poor gram positive as well as and aerobic activity. In the United States, Cefidurocol has been approved by the Food and Drug Administration that is FDA for use in adults with complicated urinary tract infections and or pyelonephritis due to highly resistant gram-negative organisms when there are no alternative treatment regimen. We will talk about the combination of cephalosporins with beta-lactamase inhibitors in our next video. All the cephalosporins except ceftriaxone require dose modification in the presence of severe renal failure. What are the mechanism of resistance of cephalosporins? The mechanism of resistance of cephalosporins are similar to the penicillins. Production of lactamases enzyme by the bacteria can cause dissolution of the beta lactamidin of cephalosporin, thus causing resistance. There can also be a mutation of various kind of channels, one of which is porin channel in the outer membrane of the gram-negative bacteria that can confer impermeability to the cephalosporin inside the periplasmic space of the gram-negative bacteria. Also, the site of action of cephalosporins, that is, penicillin binding proteins can be altered due to mutation, thus causing resistance. Now, let's talk in brief about some of the indications where the third generation and fourth generation parenteral cephalosporins are used. Cephalosporins are used in case of fever without a focus in young children, where the pathogens can be streptococcus pneumoniae and less commonly salmonella or meningococcus. Ceftriaxone is usually used in these cases. In cases of complicated pneumonia or sinusitis like pleural lymphoma or orbital cellulitis, either cefotaxim or ceftriaxone with clindamycin or vancomycin is used. In cases of meningitis in newborn, combination of cefotaxim with ampicillin is used. Note that ceftriaxone is not used in newborn because of the chances of developing biliary sluzing and jaundice, as well as there is a risk of developing ceftriaxone calcium deposits in the lungs and kidney. In cases of recalcitrant acute otitis media, ceftriaxone often used. In cases of Neisseria gonorrhea infection, ceftriaxone is used or cefixime is also used. In cases of Lyme disease, central nervous system or joint disease, cephalosporins are used. Also, infections with potential pseudomonas pathogens require ceft cefepine or ceftazidim in combination with a aminoglycoside. Infections in cases of cystic fibrosis, pseudomonas meningitis, fever with neutropenia also require cefepine or ceftazidim in combination with other drugs. With this, we have come to the end of the video. If you like the video, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe the channel. In the future, I will be coming up with much more videos. Thank you guys.